that's what everyone sees. Like, yeah, hey, I got this game. What do you think? I'm like, well, <laughs> that's like one piece to 30 pieces mm -hmm. of what goes on in your valve train. That's what we got. I wanted to talk to you about cams because we get a lot of calls about cams because I emphasize it on videos and stuff when I'm on the dyno and our cam shafts, you know, work well. With that being said, people want to call up here and they, you know, for example, if they have like a 427, 2650 build, but it's already together, they want to change the cam, they think they can make 1200 instead of a thousand. That's not necessarily true at all. I'm here to explain uh, how a cam works and what else you need besides the cam. We use Johnson lifters and everything. Um, so this is like the bare minimum of what we use. This is not a link bar style, it's a hydraulic roller, drop in deal with the plastic trays. So that's like your stage four head cam package and everything. That's where we start. But um, when you start getting like high revving and stuff, we use the link bar stuff and short travel. So <clears throat> with all, also that being said, this is a Jessel rocker. Uh, it's a steel one. It's actually off my race car motor and these things are very expensive and you know people always wonder well, why rocker so much money you know they don't make any more power really it's just the valve control and the valve control on a solid roller motor and the difference between a solid roller and hydraulic roller engine is there's a cup in here on every lifter and there's a spring in here that controls the cup that's hydraulic solid is does not have a cup that moves back and forth so you can't really adjust it at all unless you have an adjustable rocker and this is where this that's where this comes into play with this right here adjust the rocker and you need some lash in it when you adjust it when you have a solid roller hydraulic roller you can use on a um, stock rocker arm and that's what we do at probably 95 percent of our builds but when you start make when you want to make like record breaking numbers and you want to do record breaking things at the racetrack and you want to race all the time the solid roller is the way to go a hydraulic stuff is awesome and this came a long way but a uh, solid roller makes more the reason why it makes more is not necessarily being a solid it's because of the camshaft profile so like right here we have both ls cams this is i mean it's dirty because it's just sitting in the showcase but you can see how sharp I mean fast the ramp is on this thing like it's almost down to the bare core really on this thing this is a hydraulic roller cam it sticks way up and that's just one thing that you can look on a cam and see like how fast and slow the ramps are on camshafts and it's not about the duration of lift or load separation a lot has to do with that but I'm not talking about that right this second with a solid roller you can run a much faster ramp and control the valve if you run a solid roller cam in a hydraulic roller setup okay. uh, people do it but it's very hard to control um, the valve really at the end of the day it's what you're controlling so if you have too weak of a spring the uh, or if you have enough spring pressure but too much spring pressure for the cup and the lifter and then it collapses the lift uh, the cup in the in the lifter at 8,000 RPM, you're not making any more power, actually making less. So it's all about the valve control. You actually want to slow the ramp down on a hydraulic roller um, and control it. So, um, dog saw. Come here. He's like, I want to be on camera, dude. Yeah. Call what she's doing today. It's, it's really all about valve control. And the reason why, you know, this stuff's so much money is, you know, it's all, you know, forged and nice American made stuff. You know, the, I want to say a set of these rockers from my race car. They're aggressive. I want to say they're like 3500 bucks for steels. Yeah. So you can buy aluminums. I think they're around two grand and they're fine for like a lot of applications. Honestly, the, the aluminum adjustable rocker, uh, but on like a high horsepower, high revving blower car or turbo car, I'm talking 9,000 RPM high revving. The aluminum stuff starts to break so especially if you hit the limiter or whatever the case might be uh, a lot of cases race cars will run uh, aluminum intake 
rocker arm and a steel, uh, steel rocker arm on the exhaust side because the exhaust gets a lot of pressure with like a, a blower car for example. Uh, I know nitrous stuff you can get away with doing only aluminum stuff on the intake side and then you do a steel on the rocker if you want to save a little bit of money. But um, I just did steel on all mine because I'm trying to rev like mine a lot and I don't want to have any problems at all. That's what it comes down to. So like when people call and they want to cam for four hundred dollars or whatever it is, you know, it's not just about the cam. I asked about the whole setup, and then before you know it, you could be a couple thousand dollars in valve train between springs, lifters, rockers, push rods. You put you run seven sixteenths push rods with solid roller stuff that revs eighty five hundred. You don't run five sixteen stuff and push rods for a really good engine that's a race engine is a thousand dollars you know you have special ends and stuff on them so it really costs a lot of money to do it you know to gain you know you can gain up to, to 100 horsepower doing solid roller stuff it just depends what you want to spend your money on at that point you know what i'm saying so some people don't believe in solid roller stuff and that's because that they're not doing the stuff properly it does make more at the end of the day and it also makes more valve train noise so and you have to have maintenance uh, keep up with maintenance adjusting these so you got to pull the uh, valve covers every once in a while especially if you're driving on the street so you have to have some kind of lash in here and with the feeler gauge you measure in between the roller and the valve tip and for example if it's 10 thou cold that's what you gotta have 10 thou and adjust this to be 10 thousandths and then it will be noisy when you fire it up but that's just kind of part of what it is so like I said, we do a lot of this stuff because obviously people just want to make 900 and they just want to drive to the beach and back and they want to go to the track once or twice a year. But the people that really want to make a lot and they see our YouTube stuff with like Johnny's car, that uh, silver Camaro. May 13, 18 or 13, 20. Oh, it's May 13, 18 because you said 13, 20. I was sitting in the car still and I'm like, and Steve was right. He's got all this stuff in the car and that's why he can make 1400 horsepower. And that's why he goes, he's been 489 at 147, I think, which is fast. I think it's one of the fastest 2650 cars ever, if not the fastest. I just wanted to explain to the public, you know, that's really what the difference is in cams and setups and all that good stuff. This is also a better core camshaft with the gold looking on it. So when cams are more money and if I send you a drop ship you a cam, more than likely this is going to be the core. You can get a faster ramp on that core. So, or lip separations and stuff like that are, you know, the cores are all different. So sometimes you need to do that core for the size cam you're doing. And then that's when, you know, uh, duration plays into a factor of lip separation duration but that's what everyone sees like hey, i got this cam what do you think i'm like well <laughs> that's like one piece to 30 pieces mm -hmm. of what goes on in your valve train i have a lot of money wrapped up in my valve train for my race car motor i just got my springs i ordered three sets of springs because i ordered my christmas time and i just received them like four weeks ago and i wanted that spring so when they get tired i'll put new ones on and that's part of race car stuff though so that's pretty much it Cool. Some good info for sure. Yeah. At least it'll help you. People call in and you can kind of send this their way and get a little better. Yeah, and or... most people will, you know, bite on that stuff, especially if you can like wrench on your own car and you know how to adjust valves. Mm -hmm. Solid roller is the way to go, you know. But if you drive it 20,000 miles a year, I probably wouldn't do that. Yep. You know, but if you're trying to go as fast as you can, you go to the track and you barely put any street miles on it. This really is the way, but you have to have a good valve spring with it, a good tie valve, titanium valve, I should say, and canal exhaust valve if it's a blower car or a turbo car. You got to get the valve train as 
valve train as light as you can. Obviously, this is heavier than a stock rocker, so you get lighter valves and stuff in it, and you know the thicker push rods and stuff are going to be heavier, which does make slightly less power, but it's not. It's still worth doing it.